what is a, uh, um, a bias correction? So if you want to do a bias correction uh, or a statistical downscaling, you need present and historic data from a future climate model, and you can uh, get that from the project. And in addition to that, you need uh, current or historical observations. So for example, if you have a case where you have uh, 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 station data, you can use that station data to do a bias correction and the statistical downscaling. Now, and, and, and I try to, with the figure on the right, I try to explain um, what we're talking about. So you have the, the, uh, the present huh, or the historical output from the GCMs, which is the G. And you can compare that with the observations here, which is the O. And the B in the middle is the bias. Now, the, uh, from the present G, so from the climate models, uh, and you go into the future, and you compare these two, you get your C, which is basically your change factor. So you can use the climate model to look at the climate change. So for example, the climate model says it's going to be two degrees warmer. That is then your C is your change factor. Or your climate model says it's going to be 20% wetter. That is also the C. The B is the, is the bias. So the uh, climate model might say it's two degrees too warm or it's two degrees too cold compared to the observations. Now, if you compare B and C, you can go from the uh, uh, historic observations to a sort of future corrected uh, data set. <coughs> now, you, the, 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 the bias correction does assume, uh, has some assumptions. Um, and it uses, it can be used for, to correct for different components of the uh, distribution. So, Sometimes you only need to correct for the average, um, but very often you also need to correct for the variance. That's especially important for precipitation. The variability in precipitation in the climate model might be different from, from what you absorbed. Now, it does assume, and that's a very important assumption, that this B, uh, which you calculate for the present situation, is the same in the future situation. And unfortunately, that's probably not the case, but we have to live with that. But we have to acknowledge that uh, as well, that the transfer function that you develop B here might not remain stationary. We also, of course, need to assume that uh, G has uh, some uh, uh, factors which are, uh, which are correct, and these might be issues like monsoonal systems, uh, which is also very important. If the climate model has the monsoon uh, very wrong, it might be very difficult to uh, uh, correct for that. <coughs> no. um, to, uh, um, to get to the, uh, to the different methods huh, for the bias correction, of course, we can do that uh, dynamically with a regional climate model. Uh, but uh, we assume that the different groups uh, here do not use a regional climate model because it's very computational intensive. Uh, so we do assume that groups will use different statistical tools if they need to bias correct. And there's different ways to do it. You can do it with, with weather typing using some kind of analogs. You can use a, a weather generator, uh, but you can also develop simple uh, transfer functions. And it is also important to realize a little bit the differences between bias correction and statistical downscaling. And which of the two you need also depends on your question. So bias correction is often based on a daily to monthly timescale climatologies. It makes both assumptions to exactly reduce the PDF, which is a distribution functions, and you validate that across the climatology. For this, you can use simple delta methods, you can use quantile mapping, you can use local scaling. Statistical data scaling is based on sometimes even sub-daily timescale uh, circulations. Uh, it, it validates the uh, uh, distribution functions and the uh, uh, correlations. And you can use, for example, uh, weather generators for that. 